ailerons. I am really excited to be starting the ailerons. These are going to be cool. Um, they're built much like the elevators in that it's uh, a lot of stiffeners on the skins. So to briefly run down what the next steps in these are, we are going to be cutting apart some stiffeners and deburring those. They will get mass drilled to these skins um, and then all of those holes deburred. Everything will get dimpled, everything will get primed, and then the stiffeners will be back riveted to the skins. From there, we'll have uh, additional steps involving the structure and the leading edges and a counterweight. Uh, but first, those initial steps. Let's get going. similar to the elevators. I wasn't kidding. I actually dug up my old jig to cut the stiffeners for that out of a scrap box and it worked just fine to trim down the stiffeners for this.
The aileron bend is honestly something I haven't really been looking forward to. I did not have a good time with the elevators. Uh, it was just a little frustrating to me. Uh, but I went ahead and dug out that same contraption I used on the elevators. Uh, and I took a look. I thought one of the reasons why maybe I wasn't able to get as good of a bend on the elevators as I wanted uh, was was that there was a gap towards the rear uh, seam of that bending device and obviously you want that to be as tight as possible if you're trying to create a tight bend so this time around I went ahead and I tightened that up now if you're making your folding bending device I would suggest using denser wood than I used I used a really soft white pine uh, some more of a hardwood would probably help keep that corner that that crease tight there and I would suggest probably some additional hinges or hinges with additional screws in them. My device was a little bit shorter than I would have liked. I had a little bit hanging out of each end but I figured it worked better than having to go and start over and, and create a new one. Um, and then this time what I did is as I bent it I could hear that that force kind of spreading things apart. Um, so I actually took a series of clamps and went and clamped along the rear edge just to give it a little extra power. You can fold it so the front edge is, is nearly closing or touching, but it's still not giving you enough crease towards the back end so it's gonna spring back open. So those clamps um, really helped get the, the actual bend I needed. So after I clamped it, uh, the first one it took two go-arounds and even the second one took two go-arounds. But once you pull those clamps off, uh, boy, how he, it matched the, the template very, very close. I'm very happy with how it came out. The forward edges of the aileron are just touching the spar, which is exactly what you're looking for. So happy with it. Uh, now we're moving on. Uh, so next is to take each spar, mark it uh, orientation-wise, create some doubler plates on either side, get those drilled, appropriately match drilled and located where they need to be. Uh, everything gets primed at that point and then the spar gets assembled to its doubler plates and nut plates. dried for a while. Uh, I did something silly and I, I didn't have my doubler plates in place when I match drilled the hinge brackets. So I got to go back and rematch drill those. Not a big deal. If that's the worst thing that happens today, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, from there, it's time to once again Clico up the rest of the parts to this and mock it up so we can match drill. So that's everything from leading edge ribs to trailing edge ribs and skins.
went to Clico, the skin's in place, which is cool. We'll see these ailerons uh, mocked up. At the same time, I have to Clico the counterbalance pipe in place. Now, on the other control surfaces, we had lead weights to act as a counterbalance. Uh, that'll balance the control surface, prevent flutter. Um, in this case, Vance has opted for a piece of galvanized pipe, uh, which is pretty ingenious. It's uh, making use of, of a relatively easy to get a hold of material, um, but I have a feeling it's going to be tough to drill. We should find out. To match drill uh, which includes drilling into the counterbalance pipe uh, as I mentioned I'm a little concerned about that I actually have a drill fixture in my drill press which I think is gonna allow me to uh, control the speed a little better so what I'm gonna do is mark where they need to be drilled uh, and pull those out and see if I can't hit those in the drill press the rest of it we know what to do uh, I just got to run through drill do the old Clico shift drill again Hey, if you're enjoying this one, I would dig it if you would give me a thumbs up. While you're at it, leave me a comment, and if you got questions, leave them down below. Thank you. Despite the entire purpose of this being to keep things from walking, to keep them lined up, uh, it allowed exactly that, I, I felt. Um, and so I went ahead and I, I finished the holes on the leading edge, uh, and, and for the most part it went pretty smooth. Uh, using the bow lube really helps, uh, and just moving slowly. It's a tedious process, but we got it done. Now, I just got to get everything taken apart, uh, deburred, dimpled, primed. Uh, and then we're going to start putting these back together.
All right, fast forward to parts are primed. Uh, it's time to put this thing together. Time to rivet. Uh, I'm going to start from the inside, move outward. Uh, I'm using a non swivel flush set, my favorite tungsten bucking bar, and it should make pretty quick work of this. Alright, second aileron is riveted along the top. Great. They're both done there. Dare I say the hard work is done. Uh, my hands are a little shot. Uh, quick tip on these. I always uh, add a little padding to my bucking bar uh, anytime it's in contact. If it's resting, in this case, on the spar of that elevator, keeps it from chafing the primer or marring the metal. Now, the tip in this instance is that that spar isn't bent at a 90 degree, degree angle. So, if you want your shop head of your rivet to be parallel with the surface of the material, which you do, go ahead and build up the leading edge of, of the padding on your bucking bar a little more so that when it meets the spar, it's meeting at the same angle.
So there's just four last rivets at the end of the ribs here that I had to switch out the yoke to the no hole yoke because it's such tight clearance. Uh, and then left aileron's done. So that's it. That's the ailerons. Um, that was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I think there's a little more to these than I thought there was going to be as well. Um, I have one here cleaned up and I think it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with them. I have one mocked up on the plane. Now, they won't be installed until the flaps are done and the ailerons and flaps will be installed at the same time. And there's actually quite a bit involved in installing these. So that'll be a whole episode in its own coming up in the future. Uh, for now, what we have next is going to be the flaps. They should be a little bit simpler than the ailerons, um, but still a fun project nonetheless. So for now, that's all I got, uh, but I can't wait to see you next time on Ryan Flies.